you are listening to Lighthearted, the official podcast of the United States Lighthouse Society. My name is Jeremy Dontremont. Welcome. My co-host today is Michelle Jewell Shaw, teacher, mom, and chairperson of Friends of Portsmouth Harbor Lighthouses. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Jeremy, and hello to all of our listeners out there. Today is April 9th, 2023, and this is episode 220 of Lighthearted. In a few minutes, we'll hear part two of a two-part conversation I had with Jack and Toby Graham, who have lived at many different lighthouses as docents and caretakers. Before we get to that, I want to mention a couple of events that are coming up at lighthouses. That's right. At Point Arena Lighthouse in Northern California, there will be a Wind and Whale celebration on Saturday, April 22nd from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will be kite flying and also naturalists on hand to tell everyone about the gray whales and other marine mammals that can be seen in the area. There will also be a bake sale in the Fog Signal Building. Visit pointarenalighthouse.com to find out more. Yeah, I visited Point Arena Lighthouse a few years ago. It's an amazing place. Wish I could be there for that event. Also coming up on April 20th at Cape May Lighthouse in New Jersey, there will be an evening Stairway to the Stars Lighthouse Climb. Climb the 199 steps to the top of Cape May Lighthouse at the start of a new lunar cycle when stars and constellations are more visible. The same event will also be happening on May 19th and June 18th. See capemaymac.org. That's C-A-P-E-M-A-Y-M-A-C, capemaymac.org, to find out more. So, Michelle, let's introduce part two of the interview with Jack and Toby Graham. Sure, Jeremy. Jack Graham had a long career with Pennsylvania State Parks, and since 2005, Jack and his wife, Toby, have lived at lighthouses all over the map as resident docents and caretakers. They've also been involved in historical reenactment groups since 1976, both as performers and costume makers. Jack also does old-time storytelling as Pennsylvania Jack, performing at venues all around the state. And he's an avid lighthouse researcher who has written dozens of articles for the U.S. Lighthouse Society's magazine, The Keeper's Log, and for Lighthouse Digest magazine. Toby and Jack have lived and worked as volunteers at such iconic light stations as Seguin Island in Maine, Cape Mears in Oregon, Split Rock in Minnesota, and most recently Cape Lookout in North Carolina. At some of these locations, they have portrayed a keeper and his wife in living history presentations. I've corresponded with Jack for years, and it was a lot of fun getting to talk to the Grahams about their lighthouse experiences. Their enthusiasm and passion for history, nature, and all the great things you can experience at lighthouses really comes through in these interviews. So let's listen to part two of my conversation with Jack and Toby Graham now. So you've mentioned Little River Light a couple of times in Maine, which is way up the coast in Cutler, Maine, almost as far as you can go up the the main coast and the and way down east Maine there. <laughs> and that's another really special place. I've been there yeah. a number of times over the years. And uh, Terry Roden has been the the live in uh, caretaker there for quite a few years now. But you've you spent time there. Can you tell me? In what capacity you spent time there? And uh, tell me a little we, bit more. We found our way to Little River basically because through some articles we had met Tim and Kathy from the Digest, right? And yep. at that time, Tim was still with the AMF, I guess, and they were AL, ALF, America Lighthouse AMF, Foundation. Right? Yep. And uh, again, I usually, as I often do, I mention, hey, we've been volunteering at lighthouses. What do you do? You have anything up at Little River? Sure, come on up. You know. So we've actually been back to Little River four times, and it was Tim and Kathy that got us up there the, the first time around. Yeah. Uh, but there we definitely were hosts as well as, you know, tour guides, and, uh, and, and there's certainly some caretaking. There's always tasks to do, mowing to do, fixing to do. Uh, in one of our trips, I laid out a couple of trails around the island, a little, even though it's a small island, some, some loop trails. Mm-hmm. People who and, uh, haven't been there, they have to realize that this lighthouse is on a small island, basically in the harbor of a lobstering town. Mm-hmm. And you have to get there by boat. Yep. And what they do is rent out the top floor. There's rooms there. And it's kind of a bed and breakfast, bring your own breakfast place. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> it was fascinating the groups of people that we had. At one point, we sat in the living room at night speaking German, Spanish, and English all at once, back and forth among us. A lot and, of international uh, visitors. A lot of international visitors came out. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, you know, more of hosting there than actually giving any kind of tours. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it's a very short lighthouse. Don't take long to give a tour of the place. Right? <laughs> that, well, that's true. That's true. But it's a it's such a, a beautiful island. It's it a is. The whole pristine place. surroundings. Uh, you got to walk a boardwalk sure. from from the yeah. boat to the, exactly. the light station. Across, right? the island, and yeah. they they farm like a farm all tractor to bring the people in. Farm tractor and the trailer for hauling luggage and it's stuff down. across it, from the visitors. Two, two stories there that stick with us, and we've told people over and over again. I think was uh, we had. Two couples from Boston came out, and of course they didn't want to come in our little boat. They wanted a bigger boat, but that was okay. We got them there, and they promptly began walking into the lighthouse with we their said, suitcases. With right? their suitcases, and we said, "No, no, you stay over here in the house." And they kind of raised their eyebrows and said, "We paid to stay in the lighthouse, so we <laughs> let them go on in and kind of be saying, okay, look, we didn't think we.'" <laughs> You could stay here. You, can, thought, you can stay in here, or you can come over to the nice bedroom in the house. Right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, spiral came... stairs are not the most comfortable things to sleep <laughs> exactly. on. Exactly. Well, they finally came back over to the house and got settled. And as they were fixing their dinner, they said, "Oh, the, the sun is setting. We need to go up and look at it." And up they went, and out came. Well, they had to go back over to the boathouse side to watch the sun go down. Right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, as the sun went down. And they came back over, they looked up, and the man said, I've not seen stars like this since I was a little boy. Because, of course, they grew up, they've been living where there were so all these city lights. And they just reveled at the stars. And the next night, they decided they'd watch the moon rise. And up they went. And the wife came in and said, her eyes were so big, and she said, the moon comes out of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and yes it does and, and it, it uh, certainly yeah. does big and bright well in a, in a sense in a sense yeah. <laughs> which, you, you can talk about sunrises all you want the bull moon coming out of the water is one of the most amazing sights in to my mind and we will sometimes look at the calendar and if we have the choice to pick a time when the full moon is <laughs> And an east-facing location. We'll try to do that. Doesn't always work out. Yeah. Well, it doesn't cooperate as you're well aware. Of it. Yeah. That that, that uh, remark just is. It yeah. does indeed. The moon comes out of the ocean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's not quite the same kind of thing, but it just brings to mind a story. I remember hearing that uh, from a, a coast guard keeper at Portland Head Light in Maine. He said uh, a woman tourist was was there, and she's looking out at the at Casco Bay the ocean there and she said to him is that the atlantic ocean i thought it would be bigger <laughs> <laughs> well okay that that's going to lead us back to cape mears okay mm -hmm. nobody actually tells us better than, than i but i'm going to tell you anyhow cape mears sits <laughs> on the bluff right above the pacific right and a lady came back into the, the gift shop there one day and asked what is this water out here and of course, Toby told her that's the Pacific Ocean. Next stop is Japan or whatever, right? <laughs> and she said, no way. <laughs> that can't not be the Pacific Ocean. Well, we never figured out what she thought it I was. I think she thought it was stormy she expected and rough and it was wild. a nice calm this day. It was a calm day. You know, I think she expected ferocious waves. I, I suggested she look back at the shore <laughs> to see where the waves were breaking and maybe she'd yeah. believe you're, it was an ocean, but she just went away shaking your head like you people don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like uh, that. And yeah. another sort of people not believing, back to Split Rock. Oh, okay. Okay, a woman one day, she comes over to, to one of us and says, I don't get it. She said, there's this great big light. And she's pointing up to the, the side of the fog building where they now have fake horns those aren't the original horns you know and she says all these sound machines this is only a lake <laughs> and Sorry. i said ma'am did you ever hear the edmund fitzgerald you know you know gordon lightfoot could have sung about how many other other ships you know that are out there in the middle but to her yes. again, it was a nice calm day you know yeah
And a, uh, you see those places when uh, I think the latest digest has pictures of waves bursting over Portland Head, you know. <laughs> yes, I've seen those pictures. Ben and, Williamson uh, took some, yeah. some amazing ones. You know, Split yeah. Rock, of course, was built before roads came in. Yeah. Before they had a tramway and everything came in by a derrick and a storm blew that derrick off that cliff, <laughs> which is what led them to a to a tramway. So, you know, people just can't imagine the ferocity of uh, storms on the lakes and the ocean if they haven't ever yeah. had that opportunity. Yeah, it may be a lake, but it's bigger than a lot of seas. It's a... <laughs> yeah. it's inland sea. What, the AC? Is that what the Coast Guard calls the Great Lakes? Uh, you know, you hear about the seven seas. They call the Great Lakes the eighth sea. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 So let's let's move on and just talk a little, uh, maybe a little bit about uh, Piney Point Light mm -hmm. Station in the Chesapeake region, uh, Maryland. Uh, it's uh, very different from a lot of places mm -hmm. you've you've been in that it's a a little lighthouse relatively to, compared to a lot of them. We uh, at the time the the director of the it's the St. Mary's Park System that, that owns that one. And at the time, a lady by name of April Havens was the park director, and uh, I was contacting lighthouses like I always am, seeking some tidbit of information. Yeah. And in the process, mentioned to April, hey, you know, we we do lighthouse things, and she said, well, we really don't have a place to stay, but we always have a big event for lighthouse weekend. Would you like to be interested in coming down for that? So we have been back down for what six, seven years yeah. now for Lighthouse Weekend. We get down and you know dress stay up. Stay on and, the second floor, camp and, out uh, on the second floor. Actually, do stay in their keeper's house and you know sort of make do kind of situation. Of course, it's one of the it was the earliest lighthouse built on the Potomac uh, on the way up. Mm -hmm. uh, 1836, I think, is a very, very early end. One of the John Donahue little stubby towers, all rubble stone, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, probably not a well visited one, but but a uh, you know a, a, a one more different style of lighthouse, probably sure. the oldest one that we've been to. Again, we dress in period clothing and take on the persona of uh, one of the old keepers, <clears throat> Mr. Yateman, and I'm his wife, Susan. And uh, again, one of our favorite. We have a lot of good stories, but a uh, gentleman came, went to talk to Jack, and I guess at that point, Jack introduced himself as Mr. William Yateman. William Yateman. And I was on the porch sweeping, which had been doing most of the afternoon, greeting people on the porch and pretending to be cleaning up at things and taking them into the house, showing them around. And upstairs came this gentleman, and he looked up and he said, Mrs. Yateman? And I said, yes. And he said, I'm your grandson. <laughs> Wow. I put my arms out, <laughs> gave him a big hug, and said, "I'm sorry, I never really lived to meet you. I'm so glad you're here now." <laughs> and he, just but was, he was a descendant of the of the Yeah, oh, both that is uh, great. William Jr. and Senior were were light keepers down in uh, in that area of Maryland for many many years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now. I know he didn't really think you were Mrs. Yateman, but I'm, wa I'm wondering <laughs> well, if there were, if there have been times when you've been portraying uh, these people at some of these places where uh, visitors think you really are a, oh, yeah. a lighthouse yeah. keeper. Well, I don't know if we're yeah. really that good, but yeah, <laughs> some, some, some we occasion, are. particularly yeah. you know, people try to get you to come out of character, and it, yeah. it's always fun to not let that happen. You know. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Uh, uh, there's a woman, uh, an actress here in Portsmouth, uh, New Hampshire. She, I don't know if she's still doing it, but she was giving tours at a local historic house and playing the part of a woman who lived there in the early 1900s. Yeah. And she never broke character for a oh, second. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's particularly mm -hmm. fun. Uh, you know, people yeah. you can ask them questions about things. To them, for example, uh -huh. I like to say, right. "Have you been set upon by robbers? <clears throat> what happened to your?" Your clothing, you know, it's very strange. Why why are you women wearing men's pants and oh. all kinds of, you can always do, you know, throw something in that they just yeah. it's fun to play with the public. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Again, uh, there's so many I know we can't talk about all of them, but you, you there's one place, at least as far as I know, only one place outside of the US where you've uh lived as as docents. That's a Swallowtail Light Station right. on, on Grand Manan in oh. New Brunswick, Canada. It's a beautiful place. I just had Ken Ingersoll, who I believe you know, okay. on the yes, podcast. Ken is a dear friend. He, he really is. And as you know, his wife, Laurie, passed away, unfortunately, about two years ago now. Yeah. And they were just 
both wonderful people. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, we spent uh, four times on Little River. And of course, if you're on Little River, when you look east, what do you see? But Grand Manan Island. Yep. And uh, as the darkness comes, you can see two of the lighthouses on Grand Manan, both the uh, Long Eddy one uh, up at the north end, and then the north southwest point, I guess is what it's called, at the very, very southern tip. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we said, well, hey, there must be a, there's lighthouses on Grand Manan. Let's look into them. And uh, in the process of that, we came across uh, Swallowtail and came across uh, the Swallowtail Keepers Association and came across Ken Ingersoll. <laughs> so yep. as we often do, we said, hey, you know, we've been doing this lighthouse volunteer thing. Uh, what do you got? And Ken was very eager to say, come on out. Uh, so we spent, uh, we were there twice and uh, we were actually hoping to go back this year, but he's got some maintenance plans in the works and may need the house for uh, for workmen and we understand that certainly a priority over having you know having us come back for whatever whatever we do yeah but, uh, yeah as you as you know from the interview ken has been uh, hired now by the canadian coast guard as a substitute keeper and he's been in fact he's back down at uh at uh machai seal island machai seal right now yeah i just yeah. mailed, him, yeah. mailed him the other day quite an honor and uh mm -hmm. but he's he's quite a uh, i mean he just breathes swallowtail and you know those, those lighthouses are just part of his part of his soul <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good way so, to put it yeah. now there um uh, again we're pretty much docents as far as lighthouse tours and talking about life on the island as it came you know the that's a quite a it was a duplex house the present house that's there was actually a a duplex and it's been opened up and uh we've uh, been fortunate again to stay it's one of the eight light keepers original light keepers houses we've been able to actually stay in over our our journey and i've been able to use my french to give tours in yeah, french which yeah. is unusual yeah a lot of the visitors yeah. there are from our, uh, our canadian canadians yeah. obviously mm -hmm. and again it's different it's different you get there over a swinging bridge and then out down across, across this long point of land almost an island yeah way out to the end and again you see the whales spouting out there and porpoises and seals playing uh, in the coves and another there's a place of wonder there's a yeah. uh, teleport there of course when the canadian coast guard comes in yeah. to do anything they, they come in by chopper as uh, more and more lighthouses i guess are are doing nowadays I think you, if you listen to the the episode of the podcast I did with Ken Ingersoll, you know that I've photographed that one from the water a couple of times, but I haven't been uh, right up to it. But oh. I hope that's going to happen this uh, coming October. I hope you to be do on that. It. Yeah. Well, really said, we lived there. It was kind of fun because in order to get to the lighthouse, you have to come over the back porch of the keeper's house, and our kitchen had sliding doors basically right there on that walkway. People would come by, and of course, they come over look in to see and yeah, there's people in there you know kind of a thing <laughs> oh my goodness well we finally put up a sign on the door that said if you really want to look in that's fine put your nose right here and, <laughs> would, and didn't do that often but a big circle on the glass and people then would come and peer in and if we were there we'd wave at them and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it that's funny fun living there. Right. Yeah. it's like they think they're at a zoo or something yeah. well, exactly Ooh, live yeah. people well, they're very fortunate uh, they got Ken calls him a cupola. I guess that's what you call it in in Canada. We, we refer to it as a lantern. Yeah. He has referred to it as a cupola. And uh, the one that had been there was a uh, replacement of the original that was very small. And it was yes. just out of sight. So uh, they were fortunate to have a fundraiser and have one made of the original size. And we were, we were there when the, when the old one was pulled away and uh, the new one came in, and they were also fortunate to have found the the Fresnel lens that was there once from the, mm -hmm. from the Canadian. That's now back in in they place. It lowered down, and they, all they had to do is touch it with a finger and push, settle yeah, it right down. Yeah. Amazing. But, uh, yeah, that's all great. A great yeah. thing. Uh, it looks uh, the way it's supposed to look. It looks like it did originally again now. Yeah, yeah. look at the, the pictures of it now yeah, versus when that after, smaller yeah. one on it. Joking, I said, it looks like a guy with a head a hat that's too small for his head. Yeah, uh, Ken Ingersoll, uh, I think he made reference to a shrunken head the way it looked yeah. before. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got uh, one way of looking at it. 
Sure. So let's uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you've uh, alluded to it once or twice, but Cape Lookout Light Station on the Outer Banks, you uh, spent some time there, right? Yeah, uh, that was our most recent, uh, just yeah. this past summer, yeah. early May, Memorial Day into June, we were down. Again, that came about from uh, contacts looking for some information, you know, and uh, I typically, as I do, I, I give them a little bit of, here's we've been White House volunteers here, there, any other place, uh, you have some kind of a program. And uh, well, yes, they did. Well, they're, they're very fortunate. They have a lot of people and a lot of repeats, a lot of uh, people who've been coming back year after year after year. So uh, they only really gave us a three week slot because of the number of other people that they, that they had. Which was still, it was a new adventure. We, although we've been back to a couple repeatedly, we we like to find a new spot because <laughs> there's always more to learn and uh, different experiences. Yeah. And uh, we've learned a ton of geography, as you might imagine, in our in our the course of our time. Yeah. So, uh, so Cape Lookout was pretty nice. One of the nicest facilities to stay in. Uh, really? Over course of the year they've had several keepers houses they only have the one left but the second floor of it is just a gorgeous volunteer apartment if you will mm -hmm. and uh, the lower floor is a, uh, a museum they have a short video for the visitors in there and uh, it was just pretty much a meet and greet unfortunately that lighthouse has been closed to actually climbing now for a couple of years and it looks like it will be for a while a while longer yet but there's yeah. still Plenty to talk about. Yeah. And one of my favorite things to do, having been a teacher for so many years, is I always like to try to teach the public something about a lighthouse. And the many misconceptions, of course. I ask usually one of the first questions. I ask them if they have any questions and try to answer them. And then I say, all right, now it's my turn to ask questions. Why a lighthouse? Why do they go to the expense and the time and the trouble of building these? And they say, well, it keeps the boat safe. How does it do that? Oh, it lights up the area like a street light. Well, okay. That's a very common answer. And then, um, well, what, what's it doing, really? Or it keeps them off the it rocks. It keeps it off the rocks. And they'll That's say it. this even in North Carolina, where there isn't a rock in <laughs> under miles. You know? keeps the boats off the rocks. <laughs> and so I finally get around to talking about the daylights and the night signal, of day course. Mark. Day marks, mm -hmm. rather. And um, it's fascinating. And this was a perfect place to do that, because you've got very obvious day marks on the Cape Lookout Lighthouse, these what they call checkers yep. down the sides. And well, why did they do that and explain about the four lighthouses in a row, all red brick, then painted white? And a lighthouse can only do one thing. That's to tell you where you are. That's what it does. Then you've got to know what you're looking for and what it's warning you about or if it's welcoming you or exactly what spot it's marking and why. And this was a perfect place to explain about what those checkers were doing and that they actually showed you the north and the south and why that was important here. It was a great teaching, the lighthouse itself, mm -hmm. a great teaching object, you know, yeah. model to explain anything about a lighthouse too. So if at the end of talking to people, they can turn to me and say, wow, I never heard that before. I've learned something. Then I feel like I've done something. Probably the most uh, commonly acknowledged wow i didn't know that is the simple fact that all lights had to look different from one yeah, another really. people just never stopped to realize that and once yeah. you explain that why yeah that makes sense they say yeah. the character you know, otherwise it's just a light in the dark you know kind of a thing and uh, yeah that's one of the things we always try to make sure we get across to people yeah yeah not only yeah. was this one different how was it different and why that was important yeah yeah, my own talks about lighthouses. I at the very beginning I do a little introduction about the the basics of what lighthouses were built for. Some of the stuff you're talking about, because I, I started doing that some years ago. I asked for questions at the end of a talk, and a guy raised his hand and he said, "Maybe this is a stupid question, but why did they build lighthouses? I have no idea." <laughs> and I realized, geez, I I can't. I don't want to assume anything. I have to. So I I started explaining it a bit. Yeah. 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 Like as Toby says, we like to feel that we're able to impart a little bit of knowledge rather than just, you know, letting them have access to the place. Right now. Cape Lookout yeah. was a great place. We had yeah. over the moment we were there Memorial Day weekend and woke up about oh, six o'clock in the morning. I was smelling bacon and I said, what's going on? Jack making breakfast? No, he was right there in the bed. 
I looked out our window and there must have been 50 boats pulled up on the shore, right? Which is coming closer, closer <laughs> to the house, incidentally. Yeah. Uh, pulled up and people were setting up their barbecue grills. and. Yeah, the whole bay right <laughs> behind it is basically a boat campground. You know? <laughs> it had to be 100 boats pulled in all the way along. And during that weekend, we had over 2,000 people come through. Wow. It was unbelievable. That's a lot. One time or other. But uh, it was a wonderful place for us to be. Uh, they let us have a ATV that we could, all train vehicle that we could take out on the ocean side and run up and down the beach and mm -hmm. see the whole part of you know, the whole length of the island. Mm -hmm. It was good. Mm -hmm. I'll bet. Yeah. Before we wind things down today, and I, you know, I hope maybe we can do a, another talk sometime because there's so much ground to cover, but oh, yeah. I want to move on to your articles a little bit, Jack. But before we do that, let me just ask you both. Is there anything that springs to mind that we haven't, you haven't had a chance to say mm -hmm. about your lighthouse caretaking slash docent, you know, experiences at these places? Uh, anything that, that uh, any memories that, that really stand out that we haven't talked about yet? Unfair question because we have so many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Pick out one, play, one particular place it, that slights the others. Mm -hmm. And as I said, they're all different. Our experiences have been different at every one. We can, from time to time, we have given slideshows using my pictures and things about our adventures to people. But we're not in it to write a book or to make money from lectures, et cetera. We do it because we enjoy it, because we think what we're doing right at the time is teaching people, having pe you know, the people understanding and enjoying the lighthouses more than they would have otherwise. So we haven't done anything like that of amassing all of our things together. Mm -hmm. uh, An interesting edited. question we often get, though, is, wow, this sounds like fun what you people do. How do we get to do this? And they want to know, who do you call? You know, And I say, well, they're... There is no 1-800 lighthouse, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I yeah. tell people, you, you look at, I've got the map. I think, the, I don't know who put out the map, the lighthouse map of the U.S., you know. Yeah. We'll look at that and say, where haven't we been lately? You know, what's, what's up there? And then you figure out who owns it. And I do tell people, you know, you really ought to learn a little bit about lighthouses too before you before you look into this. But, uh, but, but it's, it's a very common it's question. How well, can we do this? Yes. Talk to people uh, uh, to have some first aid training and no CPR. Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, other things. Um, but, but we sometimes even to... ourselves marvel at uh, well, Seguin was a perfect example. We didn't cover on this, you know. But then we arrived at Seguin. It was the tail end of a storm, and they had had a work party out there ahead of time opening the island. So we arrived, they ferry all the stuff in, people helped us get it up the tramway. And then 10 minutes later, everybody was gone. And there we were standing on Seguin Island all by ourselves. You know, it was like, wow. <laughs> and they gave us the key and they went away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously, uh, you know, we've so had we, that experience in a couple other places. Yeah, Tim and Lynn, the, the, who've done a lot of the same uh, right. kind of work, uh, told me the exact same thing, how they were they were typically told oh, there's going to be a certain amount of training, but then <laughs> they would be dropped off somewhere and they'd say, oh, we've got to, you know, because of the tides or whatever, right, exactly. we can't stay. Right. We've we got to go. That's, exactly yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, that, that's, that's number one in our hearts. And mm -hmm. we, as I said, we like to think we left some of us, some of ourselves there. Definitely. No question about having taken, you know, taken it with us. Yeah, yeah. Part of Sequin and right. always happy to go back there. We left in the fog with the fog horn blowing, which it had for the whole time we were there until the Coast Guard came out the day before we left and fixed it. But then, mm -hmm. as I said, the fog rolled in. <clears throat> there goes the horn again. Yeah, and, I challenge uh, anybody to, uh, they talk about light keepers that had to listen to the fog horn for weeks on then. Yeah, we listened to that fog horn at Sequin for 101 days. Because the Coast Guard was waiting for parts. <laughs> and I challenge anybody anywhere to have listened Top to that. a phone for longer than the two of us have, right? But yeah. It was, it was, it was a kind of an allegory of our lives. We looked back and we could no longer see the island. And we looked ahead and we didn't know where we were going. So, and that's, we, and we couldn't point. see, we knew where we were going, hopefully. Right. Yeah. But we, we could not see where we were going. So That, that makes sense, know, yeah. Yeah, not looking back, but you know, looking ahead and not knowing what, what the future brings and it. We're still at that point now, right. getting older and older. Right. And we hope we can do this as long as we're still here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you were talking about how you haven't really compiled uh, this all these stories in one place, like a book or something. And I, 
I'm probably not the first person to say this, but I would encourage you to, to write a book. I mean, Jack, you're a good writer for crying out loud. So what better subject than your own experiences? Well, uh, we've, we've thought about that and it might come. Yeah, it might come. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Yeah. But we don't, we, you know, in going to these places, we feel, I feel at least, that we don't want the people to think we're doing it to make money from the experience. Sure. If, if you understand that. It's, I completely understand. We, yeah. But I don't think, uh, you know, a, the a book uh, on this subject probably isn't going to like beat out Stephen no, King no, for, no, for no, being. <laughs> right. Exactly. But it would it would be available well, to the make people. A movie out of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe a Netflix series or something. Well, that's but uh, <laughs> but uh, you have to mix in. Thing anyway, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. If, if for Netflix, you might uh, have to mix in some murders, yeah. murders or something. But um, yeah. anyway, uh, you know, I think there'd be a lot of people who'd be interested in reading about yeah. that. Say, yeah. We definitely enjoy sharing our adventures with other people right. and telling them about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, so speaking of your writing, Jack, uh, you've uh, of course written many, many articles for Lighthouse Digest, uh, owned and edited by Tim Harrison and Kathy Finnegan, uh, Lighthouse Digest magazine, and the USLHS magazine, The Keeper's Log, edited by Jeff Gales, director of the Society. I love the fact that your articles are tend to be about kind of quirky aspects of <laughs> lighthouse history. Quirky. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. and things that people don't, uh, they're interesting subjects, but that aren't normally written about much things like the stairways and lighthouses and oil houses and just, uh, you know, different different aspects that are, it's like different a different angle into this whole thing. Why? Why do you approach it that my way? Own curiosity, you know, mm -hmm. uh, about things, and uh, the recent, most recent log. I don't know if you've seen that yet or not. There was an article in there about the storage compartments in first order lenses, you know, and that went way back to that first summer at Seguin when I when I noticed them and it was just peaked. What what's in there? Mm -hmm. And and uh, it was interesting to me as I contacted other lenses that might, you know, other parks with or lighthouses with lenses that might have these. People said, oh, yeah, yeah, it does have some of those. Never noticed that before, kind of a thing. You know, I, I mentioned the, uh, the curiosity about curtains versus pulled on shades in the, in the lantern rooms. Uh, I think the article I did on tramways was pretty much the same. We were at Seguin. Seguin has the still operational tramway, you know, and the question arise, well, was this the only place that had them or were they in other places? And as you start to contact places, you realize, wow, they were a very common feature of mm -hmm. lighthouses nationwide, you know, and you look for literature about them, you know, don't see much, you know, so uh, that's, that's pretty much been, it's been sort of my own curiosity and and I like to say I've learned so much about lighthouses from people like you and Tom Tag, uh, you know, and I could go on and on mentioning other names that, that, that I appreciate that and I feel an obligation to, you know, share back what I learned and also I enjoy writing the articles, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like to say that the more we see, the more questions we have and yeah. there's always something. And, right. You know, we spend yeah. our winters then re doing the research and studying the yeah. new things and recently i just said yeah. you know all those bricks there's another article where were they made they were made different places some made on site some you know etc cetera, etc cetera. we know a little about that but definitely the different yeah. brick factories and how they got them out there and got them up yeah. to the sites so that's a whole other thing that most yeah. i've never read anything much about it we've heard some things but, but you know there's like, always something probably in you... every set not just lighthouses the more you learn the more you learn, there's more to learn. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> the more I, the, I've said that myself, the more I know, yeah. the more I realize I don't know, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just that, if you find out that the things that maybe people don't know, you know, uh, there are people who are very, very knowledgeable of lighthouses and there's some basic information that have no clue, you know, kind of thing. So uh, yeah. if yeah. I can fill in some of those chinks with my quirkiness, yeah. so be it. <laughs> well, absolutely. I commend you very, very much for that. And, you know, many times over the years, you've emailed me and said, do I know something about such and such? Once in a while, I might know something. Often I don't, because you pick these subjects that are are fascinating, but well, are 
To yeah. quote to quote Tom Tag, you asked some of the darndest questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I've certainly referred you to Tom a number of times for certain questions. Yeah, yeah Tom to... is a treasure, obviously. Tom is a national treasure as far as lighthouses go. Absolutely. For yeah. uh, anything. Uh, the, and he's the... so generous with his knowledge and his his time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tom is, Tom is great. Uh, so are there any uh, articles, uh, and you probably, again, like is like naming your favorite lighthouse, but um, what what articles have you had, do you think you've had the most fun uh, working on? Well, this most recent one about the compartments was fun because the contacting people and finding out they didn't even know they had them. You know, uh, I did two rather whimsical tales from uh, Little River about painting where the ghosts of the two sailors that are buried there on Little River came to help painting. You know, that was sort of, those were, those were fun digging, digging that information out. So, uh, uh, the one I did, I think I called the keeper did what, you know, uh, <laughs> it comes out, you know, I've been doing a column for Tim based on the Lighthouse Digest bullet. Mm -hmm. And the early ones, the lighthouse, a, service, service bulletins. lighthouse service bulletins. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the early ones had a uh, basically a column called punishments. You know, keepers who were disciplined for one thing or another, and you know, started with that, and that led to some research. And uh, I know Eleanor DeWyer did a similar article on that topic some time back. That uh, I tried not to uh, duplicate any of the incidents that she had in in hers. Uh, she's another wonderful resource who's super generous with her with her time yes. and, and knowledge. I agree. Uh, the one oil, I'm sort of fascinated by oil houses, so that article was a lot of fun putting that together. Mm -hmm. You know, of all the different structures that are there, I get I get real excited when I see an oil house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those round ones on the Great Lakes to me were uh, a real novelty. Yeah, round mm. ones, yet. Uh, Terry Pepper, the late Terry Pepper, had done a, an article on uh, the, the oil rod oil houses of the Great Lakes, but I'll find a couple places where they are that he didn't know about too. So it's been it's been interesting to do that stuff. I'm never trying to one up anybody, you know. I'm just trying to yeah, trying to uh, you know get some more stuff out. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. hopefully I'll keep uh, I'll keep going. I've got a couple more in the in the hopper. One I've been working on for about. 10 years now about the guy by the name of George Horatio Derby, who was uh, probably the earliest humorist in California. He was far more famous as an early humorist, but he was also a lighthouse engineer in the 18, 1850s. And it's been very, e very easy to find things about his humor, but very, very hard to find anything about his, uh, his lighthouse life. So uh, hmm. that article may or may not ever come to fruition, but uh, interesting. always one's on the list. We all have to-do lists, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and hopefully some of them get done anyway. But yeah. um, again, thank you for doing what you've done as far as filling in gaps in our knowledge. Uh, for those of us in the lighthouse world, we really appreciate it. So uh, I understand that two of you uh, have done an illustrated lecture about your lighthouse journeys. Is that something uh, you're still doing? She's, yeah, uh, she's I, the creator. Mm -hmm. How many of my, our friends have, have said, Boy, we'd like to, you know, see more of your pictures and see various things and uh, groups we belong to, for example, on the at the Y where we swim and there's other places have said, why, why can we see some of these pictures, whatever. So we did put together a lecture, made a brochure and, it went, and we did that for a while, did several of them, done that. but it's kind of, we haven't done it recently. Yeah, yeah haven't done yeah. that recently at all. It's actually yeah, getting starting to get long because we yeah, keep exactly. going to more places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But it, it was it was they wanted to yes. see more not about the lighthouses as they what our experience was. Sure. So to be able to see the interiors and the, the places, places where the lighthouses and, are. What are the volunteer <laughs> quarters look like? And it's it's that kind of thing. It's not really a whole lot of history about the lighthouses, but more of no. you know pictures of us with our <laughs> no. luggage in a little boat going out to a place or various things like that, that they're interesting to them to see what yeah. it is that we actually do. I yeah. do have a lighthouse history program that I've put together and I'll be presenting that at the Staten Island Museum in uh, June. Oh. Uh, presented that to several lighthouse groups. It was actually prompted by uh, the friends of our friends up at the Prescott PA light. 
although we've never particularly volunteered there as live-in residents, I'm, I'm sort of one of their advisors, if you will. And uh, they asked me to put together a, a lighthouse history program for their staff. And that's actually what prompted it. And then I thought, well, I've got this thing. I've got to, got to use it somewhere else. So uh, yeah. So that's uh, something we offer too, if, uh, if any groups are interested in it. That's something I want to maybe put on to a PowerPoint program or something. Mm -hmm. You know, share it with people rather than having yeah. to physically come and, and do. So as we speak here in mid-March, uh, I'm wondering if you have any plans yet for future Lighthouse Caretake. Any, anything lined up for this season or for, uh, in the future? We no. will be going out to uh, Point Wilson in Washington in uh, early part of May. Uh, more as guests. And more as guests, uh, maybe, than as uh, docents. docents, but we certainly want to be helpful in that area as well. Uh, Point Wilson, of course, is one that is under the jurisdiction of the society. Yes. And uh, I had read something on it and uh, basically contacted Jeff Will Gales one day and said, uh, are you looking for, do you have a volunteer program there? Point Wilson would be interested in coming. And he uh, basically wrote back and said, come on out. So uh, uh, we managed to work, find a schedule that was compatible to both of us. And uh, so planned to spend uh, couple of weeks in in may mm -hmm. at least there yeah. at point wilson yeah. and obviously we hope to be able to visit a couple of the other lights along the puget sound area while we're there mm -hmm. um, of course point no point i'm sure you'll visit which is yes, the headquarters of the u.s lighthouse the society's office there definitely yeah uh, yeah we've seen it from a distance and, uh, yeah. yeah we've uh, we've taken a couple of uh, alaska cruises out of seattle so we've been by those places but uh, never on the ground, so uh, mm -hmm. this will be this will be fun. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, with if it works out, we do hope to go back to Swallowtail, uh, if not this fall, another time. Certainly. Well, I'm sorry I'll miss you. I'll be I'm going out to Washington in a couple of weeks for a week. I'll be staying at Point No Point the end of oh. March into early April. Right. Um, I've been to Point Wilson. I haven't stayed overnight there, but uh, I think the uh, overnight stays there are working out quite well uh, for the society. Um, and that I'll just mention, throw in that uh, since you brought it up, uh, people can find out about how to stay at Point Wilson or and or at uh, Point No Point at uslhs.org, the uh, society's website. There's all the info on that. So I've got just a couple more questions for you. We'll wind things down for today. These uh, last couple of questions are for bonus points. Okay. So <laughs> I hope hope you've got your your number two pencil sharpened. Always need a bonus. Okay, right. and so both questions are for either or both of you, and you can you can fight amongst yourselves as far as who answers <laughs> first. But for, uh, so again, for both of you, do you have a? And uh, again, I know you've sort of answered this already when you said it's hard to pick a favorite because like picking a favorite child. But do you have a a favorite lighthouse among the ones you've uh, you've been involved with? We have to say Seguin. I mean, mm -hmm. as I told yeah. you, but, you know, yeah. we, we left part of ourselves there, and, and you know, our, our hearts. Ron said, "Wait, I mean, that's what started all of this, and um, it was magical. It was, it was just, it's, it's got to be Seguin. Mm -hmm. Seguin and Little Little River, though, not just uh, the main coast, but uh, they're they're just somehow special places, and uh, and uh, but Seguin definitely is is has to be. If we have to pick one, and we don't want to <laughs> pick one, but if we have to pick one. <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Well, I, I completely understand. And Seguin and Little River are very, very special yeah. places. Uh, yeah. I haven't gotten to stay overnight at night at either one, but I've been on both of them a few times and they're, they're yeah. amazing. Uh, so uh, the final question for both of you is what is your favorite thing or favorite things about your uh, long association with the world of lighthouses? Well, I have two actually. First of all, it's the visitors. I mean, without the visitors, we wouldn't have anybody to tell about this, but everything. And we meet them from all over. We have all kinds of reactions, you know, from them. We really enjoy working with the visitors. Um, maybe even before that, what we enjoy is the permanent staff, if you will, call it what you want, that, of the people who are there all the time, who own these, like, or own, but, you know, I don't know what Manage. they want for, run them and keep, the, keep them going. Uh, at our age, our Christmas list gets smaller every year, was getting smaller every year as we were losing friends and relatives. Now it's doubled 
with the number of people that we have met at these lighthouses that we exchange not just Christmas cards, but emails and messages and pictures of our kids and grandkids. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the new friends that we've made among the people at these lighthouses uh, that have been good close this friends for their, our life. Particularly true of the smaller ones that are owned by the friends groups and things where it's, uh, I, th I think of, uh, well, Terry, Terry and Cynthia Rodden, of, obviously the at Little River, uh, the the Beckers up at Point of Bark, you know, they're, yeah. they're just special people. You know, the 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 ones that are in parks, it's just a little more. The people that are there are not quite as connected to the place, if you know what I. Ms. Busa if you know what I mean, you know. The river that I work with uh, the kitchen. Yeah, and, uh, and the, but the people that we've people. met, and just feeling that we're bringing some lighthouse information to the various visitors in in, in an informative and hopefully entertaining way is is what I take the most pride in from what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if, if a visitor leaves by saying, thank you, I've learned something I didn't know, such and such, that that's the thank you. It, it's, yeah, yeah, I actually, I'm an old teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm glad to have been able to teach somebody something, to tell uh -huh. them something that, yeah. knew that made their life more interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. And uh, you both of you have done so much to uh, educate people about lighthouses and both through your your work at the lighthouses and through your articles and so forth. And uh, I just want to thank you again on behalf of the lighthouse community for for thank everything you. you've you've done. It's great talking with you today. I'm glad, you know, I, we've had this long uh, communication for years, but I haven't met in person, And but this is the next best thing. Uh, and it, it's really nice talking with you. And I hope we can do it again. And I hope I'll meet you in person one of these yes, days. Too. Uh, that would be great. That would be nice. Yeah. Maybe you never know. Yeah. Never know yeah. what life has in store, right? Oh, this is very, where we're going yet. <laughs> this is very true. It's a good thing we have the lighthouses to guide us or we'd be. We'd right. If they weren't there, then we wouldn't do any of this. So <laughs> that's <laughs> thank the lighthouses. Yes, yes. So uh Toby and Jack Ramp, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Jeremy. you for having us. Thank you for, for spending time with us. To find out more about Jack Graham's storytelling as Pennsylvania Jack, visit pajack.com. It was a real pleasure talking with Toby and Jack for this interview. They have really done so much for the Lighthouse community over the years. I hope they write that book about their experiences that we talked about in the interview. So, Michelle, we're getting closer to Lighthouse tour season here in New England, and I know we still can't make any official announcements, but uh, it looks very hopeful, I would say, that we'll be able to have tours at Portsmouth Harbor Lighthouse this season. Of course, that's our local lighthouse here on the New Hampshire seacoast that we're very involved with. I'm hoping we can announce something soon about the rebuilding of the walkway out to the lighthouse. Uh, that walkway was destroyed in a storm just before Christmas. Yes, it was quite a storm. And I too, I'm hoping that we can make an announcement in the near future about when we'll be able to get tours started and let the public know when they can come visit us. Yep, yeah, yeah, hopefully by the next time uh, you and I record together, we'll have something more to say yeah. about this. Uh, and people can uh, always watch our website at PortsmouthHarborLighthouse.org uh, for yes. the latest news. Yep. And uh, we have a Facebook page as well for Friends of Portsmouth Harbor Lighthouses. So, uh, again, uh, people should watch for that. Yeah. And also, we have two Sunset Lighthouse cruises coming up from Rye, New Hampshire on June 16th and June 23rd. All of the info about those are also on our website. Yeah, I'll be on those. And I think you'll be on at least one or maybe both of those as well. So... Very much looking forward to those cruises. As always, we thank the members, volunteers, and staff of the U.S. Lighthouse Society for all they do to preserve our lighthouses and their history. Check out uslhs.org to learn more about the preservation grants, the passport program, the research catalog, domestic and international tours, and everything else the Society does. For anyone in the Chesapeake Bay region, be sure to check out thomaspointshoallighthouse.org to learn about the tours at Thomas Point Shoal Lighthouse, which are run by the Chesapeake chapter of USLHS. The tours to the only screw pile style lighthouse still standing on the Chesapeake Bay run from early June to mid-October. 
Thanks, Michelle. And as always, to all our regular listeners and our new ones, thank you so much for listening and keep a good light. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. This little light of mine